just a quick update today I've started back at work again which means this week I'm going into town three days a week and it's about an hour on the train from where we live plus driving to the railway station of course um, and the train I like to catch which is the comfortable long distance one um, only runs uh, once each day in each direction so it ends up being quite a long day but uh, I did being back in the city is good because I was able to go to the break place and I got hold of some cupro nickel brake line I've decided this is probably the best thing to remake these hoses out of um, this one I'll probably leave as it is that's nice and solid it's not all crushed but these other ones are a bit battered and a bit crushed and I don't know how good they are so I wanted to redo those I do still need to get the the um, 1 8 diameter for this although this looks like this should be okay um, and I definitely want to fix this I, I don't like that at all um, and I've put in another order uh, to the spares so I should be able to get the piston ring I need to finish the engine uh, I'm also getting the proper uh, banjos and things that I need to make the the oil connections on the top end for the rocker gear there's a special banjo and then there's special blanking bolts uh, plugs effectively that go into the end of the rocker boxes and there is a quarter inch screw with a hole drilled through it that effectively meters the oil that goes to the top end so I want to use all the right components there so I should have those ordered soon and the really really important thing that happened today is my missing Brooklyn's remote gear shifter turned up um, and it's amazing it was well worth the wait um, we don't know where it had got lost it does seem suspicious that as soon as um, the the sender did an inquiry as to where it was and started doing the lost package thing it very quickly showed up and ended up back with me within a day or two so um, I, I wonder who had misplaced it if it was the sending end or the receiving end but I'm guessing we'll probably never know uh, the tracking doesn't show it just says it was exported and then took two and a bit months to get here but it finally got here of course it arrived on a day when I wasn't home so I've been waiting all day to to come and unwrap it and see it and uh, it's really cool so this is a, a copy of the the original Brooklyn's ones um, you can see how it extends the gear lever because otherwise there'd be no way you would be able to reach it um, and it's on a sort of a slight angle uh, if I sort of sit approximately in the car uh, you can see it here and the um, the feel of it is amazing very short little shifter and it just sort of clicks into place uh, I can't remember the pattern off the top of my head I think it's first second third and fourth uh, it's kind of backwards to how you'd expect and this here is the reverse gate lockout so that's reverse but uh yeah I mean that'll be that'll be amazing to drive with it just feels absolutely mechanical way a vintage car should be I, I'm imagining so that's good I was getting a bit worried about that um, because obviously that's a critical part and the good thing is all the uh, I'm not sure exactly where this will go when it's in there that should go up there somewhere that's the foot brake adjuster and then there's the handbrake adjuster and that clears everything just so um, I do have another one of these so if necessary it would come up here but uh, no that's that's good 
Uh, if you've watched enough of my little films, you'll know there are sort of ups and downs on projects like this, but that's definitely an up. Um, well worth the money, well worth the wait. And it's one of those things that um, stops it just being a special, I think. You know, it's one of those details that you, you really want to get right. The other thing I did the other day is folded the flange on the back of the radiator shell and played around a little bit more with the shape of it. Um, folding that flange, of course, anytime you fold the metal, especially if you're folding along a curved edge, it's going to affect the shape of everything. So you have to do the appropriate shrinking and stretching to get it all to line up again. But folding that flange has actually improved the shape of the top. Um, and it's also, this is my simulation of a radiator grill, um, it's also put everything into the right alignment. Um, I have got some of the heights are a little bit wrong. I think this is a little bit short and it's fractionally too short across the width by maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, these don't really seem to fit very well. So uh, I think some of that's because of the taper on it. But if you get these in the position where they need to be drilled through, they're not in the center of these mounts. That could be because these mounts are probably cast copies. And often when you cast aluminium like that, it'll shrink. So I wonder if these are fractionally smaller than they should be. But that's not a big deal. We can pack out underneath these, I guess. And uh, the bit I was having an awful lot of trouble was with was this front here. Uh, it, it, it's, it's putting a flange on a piece like this where it's actually curved it's curving around that way and also around that way it, it was just confusing me and in the end I had to make a model out of paper and fold the flange to see if it needed shrinking or stretching because I was just getting all confused and it turns out you need to shrink this flange and that will bring this out because what was happening before is it was pulling in uh, so it wasn't in the right plane that way. Shrinking this, um, if you've got a flat piece and a 90 degree flange and you shrink that flange, it will curve this that way, um, but it, it's also brought it out. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, that's what happened. And I've compared the measurements of this to measurements that a friend sent me that were taken from an original Brooklyn's one. So it, it's pretty close. Uh, it's still not really neat enough to use, but now I've made one, I could, I could make another one and I know how to, do, how to do it properly now, I think. Well, I don't know if I know how to do it properly, I know how to do it better. Uh, this is now sitting, the blocks actually have it at the correct height. So this is actually the correct height off the ground. It seems to be the correct height in relation to where the engine sits. And um, based on drawings I've got off the, the bodies, it's on the correct angle if you were to take the line from the top of the scuttle down to that. Because uh, obviously that's not flat. There's a, there's a slight slope on it. So that's pretty much where that needs to be. Um, so that's good enough for me to, to keep going with that now. And if you compare this one with the, the sort of cobbled together one that was on an original Brooklyn's, you really notice the difference in height. So this one would never have been able to fit properly because it would have hit the, uh, the front axle would have hit it underneath the bottom. So you would have had to have had it higher. Uh, the other thing I have found out is that these mounts are definitely in line with the axle so this is also the correct positioning forwards and backwards so that gives you a fairly good idea of what it's supposed to look like so we are getting there slowly <laughs> 